guys. Hey, I'm JB with Five Leaf Wellness. I'm sitting here with Officer Greg Stroud, local police officer, and we are going to be going over basically industrial hemp do's and don'ts about it. <laughs> First up, I just want to talk about the law of industrial hemp. Do you know much about it? Like what it is, what it isn't? Like uh, can I smoke it? Can I use it? How, how can I use it? So the only thing I know about it is what's generally used in shops like this. So you have your, your industrial hemp flour, um, your tinctures and your oils and your salves and creams and everything that you can make from the plant itself. Okay. That all knocks out. All right. Gotcha. All right. Do you know the difference between the, the you know, obviously CBD industrial hemp and recreational? In order for it to qualify under that farm bill for your industrial hemp, it has to be below the 0.3% the THC. If it's anything higher than that 0.3%, then it's classified as marijuana and you have to check your local state laws. Okay. Now, in the South, obviously, we are not uh, a recreational state. We're not even a medical state in Tennessee. No. But we do have access to industrial hemp. And all the approved methods are smoking it, eating it, ingesting it, growing it, and all these kinds of things. Correct. Do you think that this is a good push forward towards legalizing recreational and medical? I do. Um, and a lot of that is because... CBD and hemp compared to cannabis of THC, they look identical. Mm -hmm. And the, the properties around, such as the social gatherings, um, the tools used, the methods consumed, are all very similar. Good. Now I got a couple questions about from the law side. First question, what are the officer, local officers used? I mean, have you talked to other officers about CBD? So, I have. Um, and from my experience, it's kind of a 50-50. Some people are like, okay, well, I don't really care. Go on. Other guys are saying, you know, like, we'll make an arrest every time. Um, so it's really who you talk to um, and their personal beliefs on hemp and the legalization, et cetera. Okay. Uh, that brings me, brings me to my next question. Have you ever heard of an arrest or been a part of an arrest of somebody that was just possessing solely CBD? products? Yes and no. Um, it's hard to say until a lab comes back because when you're in the street and we have hemp flour or if we have cannabis flour, we cannot tell the difference. Okay. Um, visually, smells, anything like that, we, we can't tell. So uh, we've, we've arrested people on narcotics for, um, for we, they're charged with marijuana. Mm -hmm. However, they're saying it's CBD, but there's no proof. So until there's proof, Correct. then you'll know. Right. But I've okay. also been out with people who have had a bag and it said CBD and it was unopened and I let them go. We don't okay. make an arrest. Okay. Because it, it was an unopened bag of Correct. containing hemp from a local Correct. distributor or something from a, like that. From a reputable store. Okay. Do you know any of the outcomes from the people that got arrested saying it was CBD? Like, I do not. Okay. Okay. So we basically touched on this, but I just want to make sure we get it completely down. Can police test for CBD in the field? We cannot. Cannot. Are there any methods that that the, for quick testing or anything like that? No. Um, most departments are going away from field test, and all narcotics or suspected narcotics are being sent to our labs. Okay. So no street testing, even for other drugs out there. So it's just correct. We, gotcha. We're not okay. issued any test packets. All right. Is it legal to test or to smoke CBD flour? like in the streets? So complicated question. It is legal to smoke CBD flour because it's covered under the farm bill, which is makes it legal. However, if it's in flour form, it smells like weed, looks like weed, um, and no one's gonna be able to know the difference. So I highly recommend that you do it at home or at your friend's house and not on the public street because you're, just, you're gonna risk being harassed, possibly arrested, court dates and fines, sure in the long run, like, hey, this was him, but guess what? You still had to go through that whole process instead of just doing it at home. Okay. And speaking of that process, I have a little sub question. If I go to court for CBD, told you guys it was CBD, got arrested, went to jail, had to pay for a lawyer, is any of that money reimbursed? I can't speak on that. Okay. Um, okay. I wouldn't think it would be. Okay. Because you're going through the state and the money that you're spending is paying for um, the lawyers, the, the taxes, the court fees, and other things mm -hmm. like that. I can't see them uh, 
bringing it back. Now, could you file a civil motion to be reimbursed? Yes. Sure. Okay. Yeah. This is kind of just like a personal question, but it's you know it's just an opinion piece. How can we remove this negative image from cannabis in our local community? What ways can a civilian help to remove this pot is bad? And what ways can you help promote it as well as a, as a local officer? Just you got to destroy the negativity um, around it. The whole stigma of okay, uh, it's been engraved that if you if you smoke weed, then you're a dopehead. Yep. You can't do anything, and you're not going to function at life. Yep. Well, there's plenty of people that have become extremely successful, um, and I mean, it's I've seen just about every class of, of people um, used weed or hemp at some point in their life mm -hmm. and everyone's okay yeah mainly a lot of education so if you're teaching people these are the benefits of it no it's not a hundred percent accurate with you know because it's not FDA approved mm -hmm. and regulated mm -hmm. however these are customer testimonies um, this guy said that you know it helped him sleep um, this lady said that it helped her arthritis in her hands she can go and work out in the garden again uh, this guy said that it helped with his knee pain there's not a cure-all, fix-all for everything, okay. but if something can help and you're not on a pharmaceutical drug such as an opioid or oxycodones and, and stuff like that, which are consistently linked to uh, pill addiction and, and abuse, yeah. uh, why not? And especially here in Chattanooga, a lot of people are very down-to-earth and like to do things the natural way and take all the chemical aspects out of it. Well, here you go. Here's just a Mother Nature pain relief or an anxiety reducer. Yeah. Or an anti insomniac or <laughs> a lot of a lot of great things. Uh, just a couple more questions about CBD. Sure. How should I travel with CBD flour in my car? Uh, if you buy flour, I would leave it in the original packaging. Um, have your receipt with you. Heck, take a selfie in the store. <laughs> um, and like I said, don't open the packaging. Once you open the packaging, it's no different than taking a water bottle that's open into a concert. You don't know if it's water, you don't know if it's vodka. Leave it closed and you have a better solid argument. Okay. Uh, what should I do if I get pulled over with CBD in my car? So the classic question, do you have anything illegal on you? No, it's not illegal. Um, that's entirely up to you whether you want to say, hey, I just left the store, I bought some hemp, it's here in a sealed package, I have all my paperwork and receipts, sure. If you don't want to say that, that's also your right. Um, however, if it's loud and you can smell it, then they're going to smell it and they're going to ask. And at that point, you're going to go through the same motions. Yes, just left the store. Here's my lab printout. It's closed packaging. Here's my receipt, et cetera, et cetera. You, um, once you leave the store, it's officer discretion of what he does and how everything looks. So you want to have everything in your favor. So the biggest thing is just keep that package closed. If you open it, you could have dumped all the hemp out and stuffed it with whatever you wanted to and closed it back up. Yep. See, now I got a couple personal questions just for you. Sure. So we've talked before this, so I kind of know a little bit about you. Do you use industrial hemp? I do. All right. Uh, how do you, do you smoke it? I do. All right. Are you worried about a drug test at all since you are an officer? No. Um, being an officer, I, I am subject to a drug, drug test at any time. However, um, in order to, to show up on a test, you would have to use a lot of hemp and or not use it from a reputable source. Okay. So all of my stuff comes from an extremely reputable source. Um, it's TDA tested, it's third party lab tested, and sometimes it's another part of a test after that. Um, I, I don't mess around with that stuff, so okay. I, I keep everything real tight. All right. Well, speaking of that, other than ingesting it, you know, smoking it or eating it, do you have any other relationship to the cannabis plant? Yes, I am a licensed hemp grower. In, in Tennessee, you're a licensed Correct. hemp grower. That is amazing. And the process was just go online, fill out your application. Yes, so um, you pay X amount of money. I pay $250, $250, and that's for up to 20 acres. That's a lot of acres. Yes, a lot of acres. Um, but even if you're only doing half an acre, it's still $250. Okay. If you go above the 20 plus acres, it's $350. All right. And then they do a simple background check to make sure you're not a convicted felon. Okay. Um, and as long as you're not a convicted felon, uh, you continue. 
pretty high approval rate. Okay. And have you successfully grown anything? Are you in the process of yes. growing anything? Or? Yes. Um, I am growing currently. And at the time, let's see, I have seven plants with one mother plant. Do you like know much about growing? Have you ever grown before? Like any other, time any other plants or anything like that? Um, I kind of have a green thumb. Okay. <clears throat> I grew up on a farm, so um, it's I treat it as I do any other plant. Um, you know, light, nutrients, soil composition. Love. Love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> Right? That's awesome, man. Do you see cannabis being legalized across the board here in Tennessee anytime soon? So the soon word is the tricky part. I do see it coming to Tennessee to be legalized. Um, we have people in our senates that are for it and that are pushing for it and currently writing bills. As far as the soon, I'm not sure. As with everything, everything is always political. Yeah. And then being here <laughs> in the uh, Bible Belt, yeah. it's extremely hard to have things like that. But there are people here that use it, and I think with the hemp being legalized, people are gonna associate more positive things yeah. around the entire process. And I think if I had to put a time on it, I would say maybe within the next five years it would be legalized. I'm saying two. Two. I, I, would, I would like it to see two. Two, please, <laughs> if you can hear me, two. <laughs> Tell your boys, just let them know, you just need it legal. Let, let's all just smoke it, have that's, a good time. It's already, you know getting, I mean? it's already getting decriminalized, so. Yeah, I mean, that's, I, I, I personally think that, like, you know, it's a healthier option to a lot of other drugs that are out there. Xanax, uh, all the opiates. Uh, these pain pills are just killing people left and right, left and right, literally. And it's like, <clears throat> we have this legal, or this illegal plant that is helping people, healing people. It's the healthier option. It just seems like, a duh kind of situation. So hopefully somebody will just go, duh, in the next two years. <laughs> do you have any questions for me, Greg? I do not. Man, I'm going to be real honest with you. Uh, so I've been talking about this interview with all my friends for a while. And I'm like, guys, I've never said this out loud. But I have a cop friend, man. And I just wanted to, <laughs> I just wanted people to know, man, I think you're actually a really cool dude. And I really appreciate you coming down and like having this like sit down talk with me. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because it's, it's not very often you see a cop and a young black guy, you know, sitting down yeah. having a real conversation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so I want to kind of like put that out for you guys. Like, guys, uh, you know, law enforcement go through a lot of stress um, trying to protect and serve. I mean, there are bad doctors out there. There are bad lawyers out there. There are bad dentists out there. Um, there's bad cops out there. But that doesn't mean all of them are bad. You know what I mean? Um, and so basically what I wanted to do here was just kind of break down that wall, that, that barrier where... They're just out to get us, we're against them, and kind of just shake hands with my brother, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, this is JB with Five Leaf Wellness, sitting here with Officer Greg Stroud, a local police officer, and we just want to tell you guys, stay happy, stay healthy. Stay safe.